What's going on YouTubers, gamers and fellow hobbyists and welcome to this episode of Hobby 1 to 1 where we're going to be looking at um, how I prepare resin miniatures and for this video I'm going to use this Inquisitor with bolt gun and power sword as an example. Uh, now I picked this one up from GW but there are many different types of resin as I'm sure you are well aware. Uh, now this one, this is a resin called what they call fine cast. That's what um, GW call it. You know, whatever their formula is they use to make it. I don't know, but they call it. It's called fine cast, and it's resin. Uh, I believe it's different from the stuff you get from Forge World. I can't honestly say I've uh, much experience with Forge World uh, resins. Uh, but I have, have dealt with uh, many other resins. Now, a lot of them are very hard in nature and brittle. So it's quite likely you will be needing um, a couple of other things in your preparation, such as this um, green stuff here, which comes in liquid green stuff form in a pot, or, or you can buy it uh, separately in like different um, like rolls of blue and yellow and you you mix it together to make green now this or you can there's milli putt and there's various other things now this is going to be used for filling in any gaps you come across like an air bubbles which is uh, quite prevalent when dealing with resins but first of all well let's let's uh, get to the model first of all shall we okay just surrounded by the tools um, that you'll most likely need for this now when you buy resin it's always good when you get them in these like clear um, plastic um, uh, sort of containers here uh, and you can, it's always good to see the resin you're getting if you if you order offline you've got to be careful because you could end up with something which is uh, resin it comes uh, very often it's uh, can be severely warped if you're not too uh, careful um, so we'll just open up this uh, this package and we'll, we'll take a look at these goods here. Like I say, it's always good to, to have them in these uh, clear blister packs so that you can see what you're getting if you're buying it from a shop. So you can make sure you get the one you want uh, with the least amount of damage on it. In my experience, you'll always find a little bit of imperfection in a resin model. Okay, so put that to one side for the moment. Uh, so we have a, a, a base uh, which comes with it, which we don't need to concern ourselves with. So here we are, just have a look over your model. Make sure um, you can see no obvious um, warps or imperfections. It's always good to do that. So I think I spotted something on the edge of this uh, sword. I think just that it was a bit rough. That's the kind of thing there, which is so simple to put right, but you can see what I mean there. And as you can see, as is often the case, these resin uh, miniatures like this sword has an awful lot of um, like um, stems attaching it to the sprue. I think this is to try and cut down on the warp, the warping factor. So be careful when you're cutting these off. They're, like I say, they're quite brittle. Some of them just snap apart at the merest touch. So take your cutters, cut just you know slightly above where you need to if you're not sure if you're if you're more confident then you can just place the flat of the cutters against where you need to uh, go so you remove that and then you can put that to one side while we get to the um, the rest of the model there now this one is luckily only in two pieces uh, a lot of these resin models come in many many different pieces so uh, you know it's it's it can be fiddly and awkward but just take your time when you're cutting out the model go around it and you'll be finding lots of um, things to clear up once you've removed it from the sprue believe me yeah, you can think you've got them all cutting it out but trust me you won't even on these uh, small models here so take him away from the, the main sprue so now you've got your two pieces. It's time to go around and clean them up. Okay, this is the part you really want to take your time with. Look for all the areas you need to, to take off excess resin. Make sure you look around the model first to make sure what, what you're taking off or what you're about to take off is actually uh, not needed. 
and is not part of the model accidentally. Uh, any bits you see like this, put it against your cutting mat, get in all the little nooks and crannies and cut towards the mat. That's the best bit. Uh, best uh, thing you can do there with that. Once you've done all that, you go around and file off the areas that you need to file. Um, you, you can deem which areas are more needed for that yourself. It's basically using a combination of the hobby knife, the mold line remover, and the various files. I wouldn't recommend too coarse of a file for, for resin. Um, you can get different grades of files and use a very, very fine one, or at least a very fine, fine grade um, wet or dry paper that you could uh, use for that. It just needs rubbing down slightly. Like I say, it feels hard and brittle, um, but it's actually quite soft. Uh, well, this one is anyway, the, the fine cast. Be very careful not to break bits of the model when you're doing it. Once you've done that, give it a bit of a scrub off with this. I mean, I'm using this like Citadel brush, which is uh, designed specifically for us, but any old brush with uh, bristles on, which are, you know, probably synthetic is um, uh, better than the natural. Um, bristles which are not too uh, rough and not too soft will get off all your bits of dust and uh, any remaining bits that you don't need. Um, when you come across uh, bits of a model that are warped, like a sword or a spear, best thing to do is run it into coal, into sorry, into hot water or quite very very warm water. That makes it more malleable. Then you can bend it back into shape, and put it into cold water, cool it down, and it should stay in position. That thankfully isn't needed on this model. So what I'm doing is what I would do after that point which is to wash it off with uh, lukewarm soapy water and an old toothbrush. Just give it a good scrubbing and that takes off all the mold release agent which you find on uh, pretty much all resin models which you need to get rid of before you apply paint of any description. Now I, I, uh, I did it on my plastic um, example as well because a lot, a lot of plastic companies use uh, a lot of mold uh, release for their plastic which is the Citadel and GW uh, don't seem to use that, uh, like that you don't really need to um, scrub off a Citadel plastic miniature but even Citadel resin miniatures you do then once you've done that you need to dry off the model Now on this particular model, hopefully you can see it there, there is an air bubble, which is kind of uh, useful for the um, demonstration purposes of the video. Uh, you can see it just there on the pommel of the sword. And the way I'm going to combat that, because it's a small, it's a, it's a very small uh, air bubble, uh, you could use green stuff like this but the, the, the area is so small I'm not going to bother with that I'm just going to use some liquid green stuff which in the case of this one is a little bit dried up so it's kind of not so liquidy which I kind of prefer because hopefully it's kind of uh, liquid green stuff shrinks so you usually need to apply a couple of different um, applications of it if you put it in a hole it shrinks down so you might need to do it a couple of times i've had to do it three times as many as three times before but uh, uh it's quite difficult for me to do this on camera keep it on the screen being zoomed in so close but what i'm doing is i'm getting a, a i'm using my texture tool from citadel i'm just trying to pick it out of the pot find the air bubble Get a little bit on there that's way too much like i say it was a bit tricky to do on the uh, camera but you're getting the uh you're getting the general idea so once it's dry you can file it down and there we go i had to do a little bit on the base as well because the base had a bit of a divot in it so uh, i used green stuff on that also Next, I'm going to glue it all together and um, get the main piece on the base at least. I like to get as uh, much of a model on its base as quickly as I can, no matter what it is, whether it's metal or plastic or resin. So just applying a bit of super glue 
there on this one and I will stick that to the uh, to the base I've already dry fitted it as to which way round I want it and uh, then it's just a simple matter of doing the same with his hand so that his sword is uh, on the arm so uh, I'll get that done and uh, there we go so that is the, the finished uh, result just after gluing not handling him too much because the you know it's only seconds after putting the glue on so but yeah there he is I'm very pleased with the way he came out but that's how I prepare my resin miniatures as a rule and there we are there is the finished result uh, the picture that we started with and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this hobby one-to-one -one. Um, I'm glad I've got the preparation uh, videos out of the way I can uh, start uh, we'll begin at least to get on to some uh, some of the more interesting uh, ones <laughs> but uh, well more interesting for people wanting to get going I mean it's all interesting isn't it but um, yeah I like to uh, I like to progress and get some paint on these guys but uh, I do remember starting off not knowing what was what uh, I will say uh, again on this video though resin you need super glue plastic glue will not work okay so plastic glue is for plastic models that was something I did not know when I started I tried plastic glue because the pieces felt plastic to me right I thought oh these are plastic and I may as well have tried gluing them together with water for all the good it did so yeah make sure you use super glue make sure you're careful when you use it as well so thank you very much for checking out this video and uh, if you like what you see perhaps you could check out my Patreon page there will be a link on the screen and in the video description below and a special thank you to all my patrons so far uh, you helped me enable me to be able to do the videos that I do so my heart felt thanks to all of you um, so thank you very much indeed Remember, all brushes lead to war. And I will see you on the next video, folks. And bye for now. Bye-bye.